Welcome to our online all-age worship with All Saints Farringdon and St Mary's Little Coxwell from me, Steve Bellamy. As we come to worship together, we continue to hold in our prayers those suffering in Ukraine through the invasion of their country. And though we'll be praying for Ukraine and its people later, let's also begin with a prayer for peace with justice. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray for the people of Ukraine, for all those suffering or afraid, that you will be close to them and protect them. We pray for world leaders, for compassion, strength and wisdom to guide their choices. We pray for the world that in this moment of crisis, we may reach out in solidarity to our brothers and sisters in need. May we walk in your ways so that peace and justice become a reality for the people of Ukraine and for all the world. We ask this in the name of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Amen. Josie Speller, our Children and Families Leader, is going to be speaking to us and leading us through our worship today. But first, we sing of the way that we all no matter what our age or background, we all have our own special place in the big family of God. Some of us are big and tall, some of us are very small. Some of us like pink and some like blue Some of us like reading books Some of us like feeding ducks That's because we're different, me and you But God loves everyone he's made God loves each of us to wear. All of us have different families. Some of us are very loud. Some of us don't make a sound. That's because we're different, you and me. But God loves today is based on Luke chapter 4 verses 1 to 13 and it comes from pictures from free Bible images and it's all about Jesus in the wilderness. Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River. He was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days and was tempted by the devil. 
Jesus ate nothing at all at that time and became very hungry. Then the devil said to him, If you are the son of God, tell this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus replied by quoting from the Holy Scriptures and a verse found in Deuteronomy 8, chapter 3. It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Then the devil took Jesus to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. He said, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. Then the devil twisted a scripture in Psalm 91 to tempt Jesus. Doesn't it promise in the Bible, for he will tell his angels to care for you and keep you in all your ways? They will hold you up in their hands, so your foot will not hit against a stone. Jesus answered him by quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16. It is also written, do not test the Lord your God. The devil took Jesus to a very high mountain. He showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and their splendour. All this I will give you if you will bow down and worship me. Away from me, Satan, was Jesus' instant reply. Then he quoted from Deuteronomy 6.13. For it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Jesus demonstrated the power of God's word in defeating the subtle and deceptive temptations of the devil. Then the devil left Jesus, waiting for another more opportune time to test him again. Angels came and attended Jesus. Jesus then returned to Galilee in the power of the Holy Spirit. I really do like those pictures from Free Bible Images. Thank you to those who helped me with the reading. I love stories. I love it when you get completely lost in a story. I wonder what your favourite story is. When I was younger, I was obsessed with books that were part of a series, especially things like Sweet Valley High or The Babysitter's Club. Each of these series had lots of books in them and each of them was their own story, but they were all part of a much bigger ongoing story. And I don't know about you, but I can still get lost in stories today. So much so that I recently bought myself um, the latest book from my favourite author, but I had to ask Chris um, to hide it for me because I was so excited to read it. I just wanted to get on, but I had loads of other jobs that I needed to do first. And I knew that once I started reading it, that would be it. Nothing would get done. Do you ever get lost in a story? Today's Bible story is not necessarily one that we can get lost in, but I wonder what is the wider story? What is the bigger picture of Jesus being tempted in the Bible? Jesus had been fasting for 40 days. He was no doubt starving hungry. I get hangry just after four hours. I can't imagine what it must be like for 40 days. It would have been so easy, wouldn't it, for Jesus to give in and to take the easy way out that the devil was offering him. However, Jesus knew what the bigger picture was. Jesus didn't want to show off or do some sort of magic trick. He knew he had to do what was right. So the devil shows Jesus the well-trodden paths to popularity, power and celebrity in our reading. But Jesus, he didn't go with that, did he? He exposes the sham and reveals God's way forward. He won't bribe people with free meals, but Jesus will show compassion for the sick and the hungry. Jesus won't compel faith by displays of power. Instead, he will demonstrate his love through dying for us. He won't impress the crowds by bungee jumps off a temple. But no, lifted high upon the cross, he will draw everyone to himself. And by doing these things, he reveals the bigger picture 
of God's commitment to us. So today is the first Sunday in Lent and for most people I expect that Lent is a season of preparation and repentance. It's about giving things up like chocolate, al chocolate, alcohol or coffee. Lent is about drawing closer to God. And for some people, giving up things really does draw them closer to God. But for me, I usually end up failing and feeling pretty guilty about it. But I was struck this week. Perhaps Lent is best understood when we see it as part of God's bigger story of Easter. Easter is a time of great celebration. It is where we see God's greatest victory. It's because of Easter that we can have a friendship with God. And for me, that's what sustains me through the highs and lows of life. Lent is a time of preparation and repentance, but ultimately it's an opportunity to draw closer to God in readiness for the great celebration of Easter. What is it that you do to get closer to God. Perhaps this Lent you want to think about four different questions. Why not get a piece of paper, fold it in half and in half again and write these questions in each quarter of the page. What can you give up for Lent? What can you take up this Lent? What can you give away this Lent? And what can you share this Lent? The point of this is not to make us feel miserable or really struggle with things. Actually, it's to do things differently. Just like Jesus answered the devil in an unexpected way. Why don't we experience this Lent differently to what we have done before? I want to try to do something that enables me to spend time to reflect on the life and death of Jesus and what that means to me as a Christian. This Lent, I want to think about how Jesus might have felt on that journey to the cross. Let's think about those four questions a bit more. First of all, what is something we can give up for Lent? We could give up sweets, TV, computer games, or an app on our phone, something that we're going to miss. Perhaps we can do this as a reminder of the cost that Jesus paid. We could instead take up something, like saying a prayer each day, reading a bit of the Bible every day, joining a house group maybe, something that more often brings us into the presence of God. For me it might be when I'm heating up my soup for lunch, rather than playing on my phone while I'm waiting for the microwave to ping, I want to spend that time in prayer. Yes it's only short but what the, pe the power of prayer is huge, even just short prayers. So question number three, giving something away. That could be, could be seen as a, an excuse to spring clean or, or make space. But it could also be about looking at what we have around us and thinking, do we need it? Or could it be more helpful to someone else? Again, I don't think God wants, to go, God wants us to go on some sort of guilt trip. Could be more about realising... Jesus went to the cross with nothing but his relationship with God. Is there anything that's stopping us or that's getting in, in the way of our relationship with God, I wonder? And then finally, what about sharing something? What do we have that we could share with others? It could be a book or a game that you might to lend someone or that you want to play with them. But could it be something else? What about sharing time with someone? giving them a phone call, inviting them out for coffee, or even for hosting them for a meal. Something that enables you to share God's love with someone else. These are just a few of my ideas. I'm sure you'll have your own thoughts of something that will help you to focus on all that God and Jesus has done for you and where your story fits into the bigger story of God. Let me pray as I finish. Father God, we thank you for our individual stories and how they fit into, the, into your bigger story, the story of God's love. Help us this Lent to focus on spending time with you, to think about where 
we could spend more time with you and what you have done for us. Lord, help us to think about these four questions, what we can give up, what we can give away, what we can share and what we can take up. I pray that you'll prompt us in something in each of these four areas and that by doing so we can come closer to you this Lent. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For our prayers today, we're going to use a response with actions and they'll come up on the screen. So when I say we lift our prayer to you, let's respond with these words. Lord, give me eyes to see, a heart to care, hands to act. Amen. So we're going to pray today um, for Lent and all that it means, but also we're going to use the Lecto for Families from 24-7 Prayer and to pray for the war in Ukraine. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you that we are part of your bigger story. Help us to know our place in the world in your loving arms. We pray for those who don't yet know you, that they will be shown your love and told about you. We lift our prayer to you. Lord, give us eyes to see, a heart to care, and hands to act. Amen. Lord Jesus, we pray that you will help us this Lent to spend time with you. Thank you that we can come close to you and talk to you as our friend. We are sorry for when we neglect to spend time with you or put other things first. Thank you that you still love us. We lift our prayer to you. Lord, give me eyes to see, a heart to care and hands to act. Amen. Father God, King of all nations, we know that you can stop wars. So we ask you to be with the nation of Ukraine, to stop the fighting so that people in Ukraine and in Russia and in all countries of the world that are involved can live in peace. We lift our prayer to you. Lord, give me eyes to see, a heart to care and hands to act. Amen. Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, we ask you to speak to the political leaders, the military leaders, the people who have, who have power and influence to affect this situation. May your words stop those who are making war and encourage those who are trying to make peace. We lift our prayer to you. Lord, give me eyes to see, a heart to care and hands to act. Amen. Holy Spirit, Comforter and Counsellor, we ask you to be with those who are afraid and alone. We ask you to heal those who have been hurt. We ask you to give strength and courage to those who are helping others, such as doctors, nurses and charity workers. We lift our prayer to you. Lord, give me eyes to see, a heart to care and hands to act. Amen. Let's finish our time of prayer by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We're going to finish our time together today by singing our final song, My Lighthouse. It's a great one to remind us of how God is our lighthouse and that we can run to him. Let's sing this one together. In my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures you won't walk out Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea In the silence you won't let go In the questions your truth will hold
Well, thank you, Josie, for your talk and prayers and for leading us this morning. Well, I hope you'll join us again for worship next Sunday. But now let's pray for God's blessing on ourselves and on all those for whom we wish to pray today. Let us pray. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. And so let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.